Alright, welcome back everybody for lesson, I believe we're up to 23A at this point, um, of our ongoing C learning C++ series. Now, you're going to notice that I already have some stuff done here. Um, I was actually about 11 minutes into the video, then my phone rang, and I kind of had a hissy fit, and uh, <laughs> decided to re-record the whole video. So what I'm going to show you is uh, functions. Functions are extremely important. I cannot stress to you how much easier these are going to make programs, uh, or well, program development for you in the future. So with that said, I want to show you how to do them. Now, you'll see this bit of code here that we've used quite a few times. Um, and I'm just going to add an endel to this. Um, you know, I'm not going to go out and do the other three things and all sorts of stuff like that. But what I am going to tell you is that, you know, rather than having this sort of a big block of code here, we can put a very simple uh, function here. That whenever we call upon this function, it's going to do the same thing as this big block of code. And it may seem like that's a somewhat limited way to do things for now. and you might be right, um, because until you get really into it, this is probably going to be more coding rather than less. But down the line, you're going to see how this is very useful. Um, you might notice that I have something up here called void display menu. And this is going to require a little bit of explanation, um, especially for people who aren't familiar with any type of programming language. Now. In all these programs, we've been using something called int main, and I haven't really told you what it is yet. So I suppose now is going to be a good time to do so. Um, the actual int in int main means that int is returning a value, meaning that when we exit from the function main, and at this point, the function main, main is just the function's title. That's it. An int is a return type. So at this point, this returns zero. All it really means is that we're returning an arbitrary number. Um, we could return one, two, three, five, seven, you know. As long as it's of type int, you could technically return it. Um, there's a reason why we return zero. Don't start messing around with that. I'll explain it to you later. Um, but for now, I just want to let you know that whenever you have a function, the thing that's preceding it is known as its return type. And void means that you're not returning anything. Um, we can do other things. We can do uh, double. We can do, I mean, if we want to, we can change that void to a double. But this whole thing right here, where we don't actually program out what we're going to have display menu do. This is called a prototype. And the reason why we use a prototype is because we... I speak for myself personally, and I like to have prototypes above my uh, main so I can get into main and then, you know, set what I want these uh, functions to do. And then I program them after main. So you'll actually see sort of a skeleton for display menu down here. And that's going to require a little bit of explanation too, so don't jump ahead. Um, but the reason why we put prototypes is if we have display menu called without having this up here, it's not going to search further in our code. It's actually just going to give us a compiler error. So with that being said, if I were to take this one line of code right here, just copy it and uh, paste it down here, then I can just do this one little uh, thing I just called display menu, and that's it. And it's just going to output the code just like that. Um, if I want to, then I can see in for uh, choice, but the reason why I'm not doing that is because right now 
this doesn't return anything. Uh, before the end of this, we're going to create a function that does return something. Um, so carrying on, this is a very simple function. It does not return any data. It does not take in any data. All it does is it see how it's this one sort of string. Um, we're going to just display it and that's all it does is it has this one sort of thing and then when it's done it comes back into the program right after the semicolon and it executes the rest of the program and it says do I want to quit? Sure. Okay now continuing on we're going to kind of uh, program a little mini calculator um, now rather than have this display menu um, actually you know what I'm going to keep it there I'm just going to comment it out um, you guys can play around with that more when you're working with the source code I'm not going to use it for the remainder of this but what I am going to do is I'm going to to do something called um, prod sum and this was actually this this I'm not going to lie this actually came from my advanced C++ course um, so we're going to make a new prototype called prod sum and we're going to take in two doubles so we'll say double double and up here when you're just doing the prototype you don't need to to name the doubles anything you're just telling it what type it's going to be returning which is double prod sum which is the name of the actual uh, function and then what types it's going to take in and there's I'm not sure if there's an actual limit on how many different things you can take into a function. I know I've done like, I don't know, I think seven or eight in the past, but when you start dealing with things that are that complicated, there's almost always an easier way to do it. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to see out to the user, uh, enter a value for the first number. And so we're just going to see in for x, um, which I already have up here. And then we're going to do the same thing again. Um, I'm just going to copy paste me and my laziness. And we're just going to see in for y, which is the second number. And then we're going to come down here, and what we're going to do is we're going to take this third variable that I've already set up, product. And we're going to set product equal to prod sum, which doesn't actually do anything quite yet, of x, y. And what that means is that we're sending the values that we just took in for x and y. And we're going to be taking them and we're sending them to whatever we do in this prod sum function that I'm about to create. So without further ado we have double prod sum and just to show you um, when we send variables in we send them in like this x y separated by a comma now the kind of fun or well notable thing is we can change their names within here so I'm going to call them double a and double b and in this case it's just going to be instead of x and y we have a and b it, they are the same variable, or well, they have the same um, sort of values. Um, so if, you know, when we pass it, x is equal to 1, a will now be equal to 1. If y is equal to 10, b will now be equal to 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to see out the sum of a plus, or well, a and then plus b equals and then we're just going to do a plus b and then we're going to do a quick end l and now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new value we don't have to 
we're just going to. Um, we're going to take double, um, let's just call it a product. Because God knows we already used it once up there. Um, and we're going to set product equal to the product of A multiplied by B. And now we're going to return product. So, okay, I want to run you guys through what this does. Let me check how I'm doing for time. Uh, 10 minutes, 30 seconds. Um, okay, so here's what this whole spiel does. What this line right here does is it's going to print out the sum of the two numbers that we took into the screen. When we... Uh, this is just a variable declaration. You guys should be familiar with that. And this is just setting a variable. You guys should be familiar with that. But this return statement, what that's going to do is it's going to take the value that's in product and it's going to return it. And what that means is it's going to take this value that's in product, whatever it is. So let's say uh, A times B. Let's say that the values we have for A and B are 2 and 10. That means that product will equal 20. It's going to take it and it's going to send it back to whatever called it. So in this case, we're taking a variable called product and we're setting it equal to whatever happens with these two things. So in this case, it would return 20. So it's going to set product equal to 20. And I want to show you guys how this runs just really quickly, and hopefully it'll run on my first try. Um, enter value for the first number, we'll use 2 and 10. And, uh, oh, yeah, well that was, that was kind of dumb, just going to quit real quick. I realized that I didn't actually do anything with those two numbers, um, or the what the number that was in product. So we're going to say the product of x multiplied by y equals product. And then we're going to run it one more time. And so we're going to do the same thing, 2 and 10. And uh, just need to add an end L. And now that's pretty much ready to, uh, to set free to you guys. So I'm hoping at this point you've seen at least what I've done. Um, it's going to take you guys a little bit of time to get familiar with this. This is an entirely new frontier for you guys, and I don't expect you to understand it all right away. Um, stick with me. It's going to be a little bit difficult to understand, especially at first. Um, now what I want you guys to do for homework is I want you guys to recreate that calcular, cal yeah, calcular calculator that we programmed uh, a few lessons ago. And I want you guys to either make a case that it can send to, or create um, different uh, functions for, you know, product sum, quotient, and all those things. Um, if you can do that, then you're in a really good position going forward. Well, that's going to be it for this one. If you have any questions, message them to me, or... Um, just post a comment down below. If you want to share your code, toss it up on ide1.com, and um, we'll go from there. All right? My name is Damien, and I'm glad I could make this tutorial for you.